Evening, Mark. Hello. How are you? I'm good. How are you? Good, thanks. Welcome to my round table. Thank you for round the, the table th- chats. Yep, it's very nice. Thank you for the hospitality and the, the bread and the, the Irish apple juice. Irish apple juice, which came fresh from Ireland, Northern Ireland. Uh, Got to get that right. Northern Ireland. Uh, last week, actually, a little shout out to Uncle Brian for hooking me up with some apple juice. How many bottles have you got? I've got 12. 12 bottles. 12 bottles. Um, yeah. One less now, yeah. The bottle has been drank. Mm-hmm. So we're here. We're just kind of a little chat about purpose, I think. So we'll maybe start off with a verse. And I was thinking about this verse today when it came to speaking about purpose. And it's Proverbs 19.21 says, Many are the plans in a person's heart, but it is the Lord's purpose that prevails. And I think purpose is, is a really kind of a little bit of a cliche thing, is it? Like, what do you think, what are like the things that like, people presume purpose is or think that purpose is? I think folk think that purpose is just one thing, really. Like, I think it's even, it's been romanticized in films and everything. Like, we would grow up in everything, like the Marvel, the DC and Lord of the Rings. It's all about, like, destiny and uh, and like uh, and folk being made for certain things. And I think that, and it's always one thing. And... I think it was Christians we get up in that up in that fairy tale thing in our heads and ah that there's just one thing in life and there's just that we're born for one thing and that like, there's nearly such purpose in the small day to day things mm-hmm. and that and the, the and the folk think that there's a point where you start living in purpose when really you can live in purpose today, even mm-hmm. now, even f- regardless of how you're at, there's purpose. I think it's a little bit like I, like what you're saying, the way we've been brought up and kind of mm-hmm. the way, I guess, culture has told us what that is. It's like the Cinderella story aspect yep. of things, is it? It's Aye. like the Cinderella cleaning the house after the evil mm-hmm. stepmother and all that kind of stuff until that one day the fairy godmother comes and waves the wand and yep. suddenly a life is got purpose because she's found her prince charming and yep. um i guess i i thought that for my life i thought mm-hmm. that like I, i've had many many random jobs and i always felt like i was clutching to get somewhere else Aye. um when when in actual fact that probably wasn't mm-hmm. the best mindset to have in those situations. Ah, like, like you're, you didn't start living in purpose like the second you became a youth pastor. Like you were a, a postman before that. And even like before you were a youth pastor, there's purpose in being a postman and a janitor in school and being a guitar teacher as well. Mm-hmm. Exactly. Yeah, definitely. Maybe even more purpose now. <laughs> <laughs> Some days I feel like it. No, <laughs> that's not true. Um, but yeah, definitely. I think... I just think so often we can think that purpose is a goal when this is, when actually when we understand who God is and maybe when we understand a little bit more of what his purpose is or, or what mm. our purpose is in relationship to him, we actually then start to realize that God is not a fairy godmother who's going to wave the wand and fill her life yep. uh-huh. with purpose in an instant, but mm. that actually um, purpose begins at the instant at, purpose begins at that moment in which we find Jesus. Yep. Mm-hmm. And, and Jesus, it's, it's the same with Jesus as well. Like Jesus was not, like Jesus was only in ministry for three years, was it? I think so. Some, I think. Ah, his, his ministry yeah, started late like in, in his 30s. Yeah, yeah. And so Jesus didn't spend the first. The I think first. it was the April tax year. <laughs> he started his job in ministry. Oh, just aye. To, I think that's uh-huh. what it was. Aye. Um, so Jesus, is, did not, Jesus did not spend his first first is first 30 years in his life living without purpose like he was a, a carpenter a joiner if if he was alive a day he probably would have had a, a white van <laughs> and and so there was purpose in jesus years leading up to be uh got into ministry and even um david king of israel he was a shepherd and there was lessons that he learned being a shepherd learned to slay the lion and the bear that taught him how to slay goliath mm-hmm. and so there was a season of I mean, Johnny Strachan spoke in a season of preparation. So the the why God works is in seasons. We even see it in nature, like God created nature, and there's a a nature to our lives as well. And there's seasons in it. We've got um four seasons for other Sam: spring, summer, autumn, winter, 
Yep, and God said that... Although there's maybe just two in Scotland, which is winter and autumn. Yeah, winter and autumn and a two-day summer that we get in <laughs> July, no, June. Um, so and then God said that each season is good. Each season has purpose. Um, I said, um, I can't remember if I was... I'm, the the two two weeks ago, mid, midweek, I think, or three weeks ago, I said that seasons in the wilderness had just as much value as seasons in the mountain or forever. So a season being dry in the winter um, has just as much value as a summer season. Each mm. is good and each is its purpose. Yeah, exactly. And I think a lot of the time in the in the winter seasons and those seasons which are harder, uh, like what you said in your preach a few weeks ago as well, we're quoting you a lot here <laughs> today, that the roots actually go deeper in those moments. And also in the valley, um, compared to the mountaintop, it's it's the valley where things actually grow and where the fruitfulness is mm-hmm. um, there. So essentially what we're saying is 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 that purpose is not a moment in which yep. we feel like we're succeeding, but that purpose is actually in the everyday and in, yep. in the every season mm-hmm. in the every moment. Um, it is what you make it to be. Mm-hmm. That's I good. Guess. And we can think about Joseph and that verse in fifty Genesis 50, verse 20, which I guess is like the verse which just sums up Joseph's life. Um, it says, You intended to harm me, but God intended it for the good, for good to accomplish, accomplish. Let me start that again. You intended to harm me, but God intended it for good to accomplish what is now being done, the saving of many lives and Joseph had a pretty tough life like he was mm-hmm. uh beaten up and sold into slavery by his brothers he was accused of of wrong in in the house of his master he was then put into prison and uh wrongly put into prison at that and then he then through that managed to get out of prison became what was essentially the the prime minister of of Egypt mm-hmm. so if we're thinking about purpose, and obviously we're not to live a, a selfish life where we're looking at what is my purpose, what can I do? Do you think like living a life of purpose can have an impact on others? I I would say you living your purpose is can affect you, can affect others just as much as it affects you. Um, I mean, f- before I had even before I was saved, before I was going to church, um, I mind just pal in a room we christians um spending time with them and because they were living a life of purpose they they had there was kindness and there was patience shown with me and there was a general authenticity that wasn't really that was quite scarce at a time in in their teenage years and so just them um spending time with me and because of their purpose the time they spent with god they had kindness and because of that it it completely changed my life. I became, I came to church. I wanted to spend more time with them that day, just because they were so easy to be around. And because of that, I went to church with them later on, and then I, I made a commitment some time after, and then ended up moving to Manchester for a year and coming back here. And my life is completely different, just because a group of folk, a group of Christians, just decided to live a life of purpose, and I just so happened to be around them. Mm-hmm. So I guess. Li- living and being conscious of that right there's purpose in the everyday there's purpose mm-hmm. where i'm at right now actually has impact on others around us because it's then that we can oh, can't. it's then that we can uh start to see others lives change yeah. mm-hmm. around us which is a really mm-hmm. which i guess i guess essentially is as christians our goal is to help others find Jesus and help others yep. like the the great commission is to to go and make disciples and and invest in other people mm-hmm. so i think that's a big part of of living in purpose is investing and living for others so where do you think that purpose filled life comes from because obviously um it'd be wrong of us to just presume that everyone <clears throat> is at home thinking Oh well, now I have a life filled of purpose. Now I understand mm. what this means. But like, where does that like start for people? Because although we've said purpose in the day to day life, and it's not like a fairy godmother wave in a wand, but there was a moment in your life, like what you just described, where actually you started to understand that you were living a life of purpose. Yeah. Um. So it, 
like everything that's created has purpose. Everything around us right now in this kitchen has purpose. This table has purpose. This plate has purpose. The mic here has purpose. This Jack has purpose. Everything and all these things have been created. And if you're created, then you've got a purpose. And I I, I can't mind far said it, but mind somebody said, if you've got a pulse, then you've got a purpose. Mm -hmm. And the pulse is given to us by God. Mm -hmm. So I think when we recognize that creation, that our identity stems from being with God and that we were created to live a relationship with him, I think then that's when purpose starts to to be active in our lives. Mm -hmm. I think about Genesis, uh, the very start of Genesis, where God created Adam and Eve, and after the after Adam and Eve is just taken of the fruit, they've they've fallen. God walks into the garden and he, he says, "Where are you?" Because Adam was hiding, mm. and Adam goes, "I'm I'm hiding from you because uh, we have done wrong." My abbreviation of that verse there, but mm-hmm. what struck me from that was that that Adam was so used to being in the garden with God that God had actually created Adam to have community with God Mm -hmm. and I think for us and I think when we look at the world and we see all what's wrong with the world it's because they're separated from their heavenly father Mm -hmm. and I think when we understand exactly what you're saying that we're created and that our purpose comes when we are reconnected to our father and when we understand that that's when we start to live a life a purpose Mm -hmm. and I think that's really it I, I watched a documentary a couple of weeks back about Robin Williams just a genius when it comes to comedy, when it came to comedy, when it came to um, films. I'm sure everyone's seen a movie that involves him. But he had a tragic end to his life where he took his own life. And we, on looking at him, can see, look at the purpose his life had, made millions laugh, made made countless amounts of movies, made, made many people actually um, enjoy moments of their life and we can see purpose there but he didn't see purpose at all and then I think we can actually understand that and it kind of backs up that idea that actually purpose is, does not come from what we do as a career or what mm-hmm. we um, think is our our main goal maybe even there's there's young people watching this who they've got terrible exam results not what they thought well th- their purpose is not rooted in their exam results mm-hmm. or, or what their um, job now looks like, but actually purpose is simply um, understanding that um, we were created to know God and to be loved by him. And um, we can actually then start to see that um, you may be a janitor, you may be picking up litter, but actually there's purpose because we're living a life with God. Mm-hmm. Um, and I, I definitely realize that I, Obviously, in hindsight, I've really realized that because it was many days I was grumbling whilst I was picking up the litter. But now I understand that that purpose is um, being with God yeah. in the day to day and doing what he asks us um, to do. So uh, here's a, a quote on purpose. It says, a man's chief end is to glorify God and to enjoy him forever. And like, living a life of purpose is pleasing to god i almost see it as like a form of worship that when we live by the intention that is set before us that god has created us for then almost brings up sort of pleasure and it's almost a worship it's like living a life of worship to god Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. definitely it's a great quote so no matter what it is when we do for god and when we understand that god loves us that we actually live a life which is pleasing to god Mm -hmm. as well and what could be better than that, than understanding that we're created, that we're chosen, that we're mm-hmm. valued, but that also that we have worth and what we do has worth to God in worship, then that's a pretty purpose-filled life. And So thank you for joining us. We're going to end it here. You've probably noticed that the, the natural light in the room is going away, so we're going to cut it off there. But thank you for joining us. If anything that was said is spoken to you, and if you want to start living that life of purpose, then please just contact us. Don't hesitate at all. We're here and we're ready to walk this journey with you. We'll see you on Sunday.